welcome to this month's Crafting Together with All Brands YouTube Hop. As you may have seen from the title, we are talking handmade gifts today. So lots of inspiration to be had, lots of ideas, hints and tips. So without further ado, shall we just get started? So I absolutely love stationery, but I also know loads of other people that really love stationery. There's nothing nicer than a really good notebook. Um, so that's what I thought we would make today and really posh nice stationery it can be quite pricey so I think it's a great thing and an easy thing that we can make for ourselves and create something unique to give to somebody else so today I have gone for some spiral bound options and that is because you can do quite fun things with the spine when it comes to decorating so the first thing that I need to do is to take the covers off the spiral binding um, so I do that just by sort of stretching out the rings a little bit and taking the covers off. Once I have the covers off, I do tend to label them front and back just so that I don't kind of get lost and confused throughout the decorating process. It keeps me on track. So I have taken some pages from the Sherbert Fizz paper pack and I am going to do my cheat measuring here. I don't do measuring properly. I never have. I never will. It just stresses me. And do you know, I tend to find when I do measure, it never turns out right. But when I do it by eye like this, it always seems to work out. So that's what I'm doing here. I have kind of sort of roughly measured by just placing it down, cutting that to size. And now again, still not measuring, just folding that around the um, book there just to get those crease lines. Those are going to be my guidelines. Then I'm just going to chop off the corners um, where the creases meet and that is going to allow me to get a nice neat cover when I cover the book. So I'm just using my Tonic Studio glue here, putting it all over the back and down the sides, placing the cover in as so, folding it around and there you go, you can see it as is there. I've decided I also want to hold, add a little pen holder to my book. So I'm taking out some um, elastic and just sort of roughly getting the size I need. Now, because this is a pen holder, it will be holding the weight of a pen. The pen will go in and out of it throughout use. So I want to make sure that this is really stuck down and stuck down for good. Hence that I've gone from a gel medium here as opposed to the tonic glue that we just used when we were sticking paper and card together. So I've put it on every side of the surface, a little bit spare around the extra, and that's to make sure it sticks down really well. So again, we're doing this cheap form of measuring, just sticking the paper down, a little line here, a little line there, chop where the lines were and that has me got the inside cover to my book once again with the Tonic Studio glue just sort of popping it around the edges down the centre and then smoothing that onto the cover like so. So once we've done that, that is the basic covering done. But as you may have noticed, we covered up all the holes. So I've got a pen here with no nib and I'm just sort of dragging it down and finding the holes. I find this the easiest way for me to do. I am now going to use my crocodile just to sort of reinforce those holes and make them nice and neat. If you don't have it, what you could do is just flip your book round and do the same down the other side. That way you'd still have all the holes. So you can make it work whether you have the tool or not, but I do like kind of coming in with my crocodile at the end. Now I want to make some pockets for the inside of the book. So I am just going to use some of the scraps that I have in this collection. So I stuck two bits of paper together and I thought this nice little wiggly line would give the pocket some interest. Now for a pocket you do kind of want to give it a little bit of depth so that there is room for people to put stuff in it. So I'm just creating a little fold line using um, my scoreboard there. Again, not measuring, I just sort of put a fold line around two edges and then I just marked with my pencil there. So I'm going to score where I put my pencil mark, that's going to be my fold line. And then I'm going to create another line beside it as a cut line, which I'm going to use now just to neaten that up. Again, taking the corners off so that we have a nice neat fold and it's not too bulky. Folding that all round and again, I'm going to use the Tonic Studio glue. We've got a nice fine bead of glue there and we can pop that round the edges and then just stick that down like so. Now, I made the pocket a little bit too big, so I've covered the holes. So I'm just going back in and repunching those so that we can get the cover back onto the book, basically. And that is the main part done. We have a pocket either side. Um, as I said, I was using scraps, so they're slightly different, but I think that adds to the uniqueness of the book. Now we need to get the covers back onto the book. 
I'm not gonna lie, this can be a bit awkward and a bit tri tricky. You just need to kind of be patient. Um, it sort of takes a little bit of poking through, a little bit of rolling the uh, spine. Um, but just keep going, you will get there. And then I'm putting the second one on as well, but don't forget to put the covers together. Um, so you don't want, so you've got the two outside covers um, showing. I've made that mistake a few times. Uh, not in this particular book, but in my times of decorating books, I've done that a few times. So you want to make sure the two outside covers are facing each other when you put them down. And now we'll have a quick look at the book blank. We will be decorating up further, but there we go. We've got it covered. We've got pockets. Um, I don't know why you need to see the lined paper, but I obviously felt the need to show you a pocket at the back and then the little pen holder. And we're going to do the same process there to cover this little notepad up as well, which is a little notepad of post-it notes, which I think is really cute. And the um, Sherbet Fizz paper packs go really well with the colour of the sticky notes, I thought. So I am going to decorate this book up using the Libby's Library and the Libby's Bakery Collection. So this is Grandma's recipe from the Libby's Bakery Collection and I'm just going to stamp that out. I have used my Versafine Clear here and I'm just going to uh, put a bit of pressure down, cut this out and um, then that'll be ready. So this is actually a family recipe. It's one that we make quite regularly and it's my granddad's handwriting which I think is really cool. So as always, I am just going to edge that in black so that it stands out from all the other stuff that's going on because we're going to have lots of stuff going on. It's going to be nice and busy, which is, tends to be my style. But of course, you can make the, these books in any style that you like and um, into the style of the recipient as well, which is cool. So I've just got a few little odds and ends. I'm just sort of additioning everything up, moving it around until I get an arrangement that I like. This is definitely a really cool way to craft. I tend to do a lot, I stamp a whole load of images out, have them all coloured in, um, have lots of bits ready, and then you can just sort of addition them up, move them around and find something that you like. Once I've got there, I then get out my Nuva glue and stick it all down. Now, I felt it needed a sentiment and the lovely Dawn, she has got some fabulous coloured sentiments which go just beautifully. They're part of her um, Sweet Treasures collection. So I also kind of realised I wanted the sentiment where I'd already put elements. So I kind of ripped them off. <laughs> so we can adapt and change as we work through the process. That is absolutely okay to do so. Um, and then I stuck that down. And then I'm doing the same with the front here. So as we've said, this is part of a YouTube hop. Um, there are a few of us today that are creating um, for you. So please do check everybody out. You will see all the details in the description box below. Um, I have seen what the lovely Dawn has made and it is gorgeous. I as, yet, as of yet, I don't know what Louise has made. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. So do check it out as well. Now, as I said earlier, we are going to decorate the spine. I have got some shrink plastic here. Unfortunately, it's the cheap and nasty shrink plastic from the pine shop, but we can still make it work. Um, it doesn't have a tooth, hence why it's cheap, which is why I just sanded it down slightly there so that there was something for um, the stamp to adhere to and also the pencils as I coloured it in. So I've coloured that in. You can't see much at the minute, but the colours do intensify when we shrink it down. So, and I'm just putting a hole in there as well so that we can turn it into a little charm. Shrink plastic is so much fun. It's just something really magical about watching it go all tiny and itty bitty. And you also go through a stage of like, oh no, it's not worked, it's all stuck together. But just be patient, it does sort of find its own way. And then just sort of straighten that down over oh, the little stamping block. And there we go, we have a cute little blender. Now I was gonna make this as a charm and add lots of jump rings and um, beads but for some reason I couldn't find my jump rings. Also, for some reason I decided to stream that part of the video instead of record it. So I went live without realising I was going live. So for those of you that were kind of watching that randomness, you would just see me <laughs> tie that in. <laughs> Honestly, technology is great while it works and it's just like, oh, so embarrassing when it doesn't. Anywho, I just kind of added that in as a little bookmark. And now I'm just adding lots of ribbons to the spine. Now this when you start doing this, you're like, oh my goodness, this looks dreadful. At this stage, it does look dreadful. It just looks really strange and it's like, what are you thinking? But just keep going. By the time you've got a ribbon on every single ring and you've got lots of different textures, I've gone for rickrack, I've gone for shiny, I've got velvet. 
Um, I've got all sorts of sort of types of ribbon in there and it creates lots of texture. I also kind of cut the ribbon flat as opposed to in the little V shape and that will sort of gradually free some of the ribbons which again will add to the textury look and that is it all there and you can just see the little charm poking out the bottom that, <laughs> that has become the bookmark. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. As I said, please do check out what all the other lovely ladies have done. Have a wonderful creative day and I will see you again.